experience that connect many of us as people. However, they have been traditionally surrounded by shame, silence and stigma. Since 2015, though, we've seen quite a lot of menstrual activism in the media, and this has aimed to challenge the stigma and silence around periods. Seeing periods in the media really matters because the media shapes our perceptions. In fact, periods matter so much to me that I've been researching them for the past six years. I've been looking at periods in magazines, in newspapers, in novels, and also on social media. What really matters is that we all keep talking about periods. The more we talk about periods, the more normal it will become, and the less shame and stigma there will be around periods. What also matters is the language we use to talk about periods. It's important that we use language that is inclusive, so words like people with periods or menstrual products. It's good to avoid terms like feminine hygiene and sanitary products because these words have negative connotations that people with periods are dirty and also they're not inclusive of people of all genders. So my message to you today is keep talking about periods because the more we talk about it, the less stigma there will be. Happy Menstrual Hygiene Day. My name is Susan Kerenen, a fusion artist from Uganda. Today, I would like to lend my voice to the countless women all around the world in the campaign of One World Period. It is every woman's God-given right to feel comfortable in their skin and their body, especially during the menstrual cycle. In my country, Uganda, up to 28% of young girls skip school monthly owing to their natural menstrual cycle, compared to only 7% who miss school for other reasons. I feel this is not normal. Let's avail an environment that takes away stigma on young girls during this time. Avail a safe environment in school where they can have access to clean water, a place where they can change to keep themselves in school while they go through their normal being as a woman. Thank you so much for God and the country. Hi, my name is Vosedi Ogido. I am the co-founder of Child Support Initiative. Child Support Initiative is a non-profit organization here in Nigeria with the vision of ending period poverty. We educate both boys and girls in low-income communities on menstrual health and hygiene, puberty and body developmental changes. We also support rural girls with sanitary pads. We do this by setting up menstrual pad banks in various schools so that these girls can have easy access to free sanitary products. Recent study has shown that over 100,000 girls in Nigeria do not know about menstruation until the first day they get their period. Period matters to me because I've been saddled with the responsibility of educating both boys and girls on menstrual health and hygiene in order to break the silence around menstruation. Period matters to me because improving menstrual hygiene will have a profound effect on women and girls. I have an important role to play in breaking the silence around menstruation by sharing my period story. Menstruation matters. Thank you. Hi. I'm Emily and I want to tell you a little bit about why menstrual health matters to me. I became a menstrual health advocate in 2017. Prior to this, I, like many others, was ashamed and embarrassed to talk about my periods or my menstrual health. In recent years, people have begun to talk more about period poverty and period equality. But what does period poverty and period equality mean to me? I think the first thing that comes to people's mind when we talk about period poverty and period equality is the financial aspect. And whilst I believe that everybody should have fair and equal access to menstrual hygiene products, for me, period poverty and period equality is so much more than just the financial aspects. It also encompasses the intellectual aspects. After years of struggling with things such as anxiety, depression, deliberate self-harm and eating disorders, in 2016, I was diagnosed with a condition called premenstrual dysphoric disorder. Now, what is that, I hear you ask? Because that was the question I asked myself too when I received the diagnosis. Between 50 and 80% of menstruating individuals will suffer from 
three menstrual symptoms. And for around 20 to 25%, those symptoms will be classed as severe. However, for three to 8%, so we average it out at about 5% of the population of menstruating individuals, those symptoms will be so severe that they affect their everyday function in life. It is this cohort of individuals who are classed as having premenstrual dysphoric disorder. So some of the symptoms that people might talk about experiencing if they have PMDD are things like um, increased anxiety, um, low mood, feelings of hopelessness, worthlessness, brain fog, bloating, joint pain, muscle aches, sleeping too much or not sleeping enough, feeling overwhelmed, a lack of energy, feeling out of control, being easily irritable, a loss of a sense of enjoyment in activities, becoming angry more easily, and individuals may even become suicidal. In 2017, there was a huge breakthrough for those suffering from PMDD. For the first time, researchers were able to say that although the cause of PMDD was unknown, they thought that it was caused by an altered response to sex hormones. So in other words, PMDD is an abnormal response at a cellular level to the normal hormone fluctuations which occur across the menstrual cycle. So why does menstrual health education and intellectual menstrual health Poverty and equality matter to me. Although you may have never heard of PMDD, it actually affects approximately 1 in 20 menstruating individuals. So what separates PMDD from any other psychiatric disorder such as depression, panic disorder, bipolar and personality disorders? For a diagnosis of PMDD, the individual's symptoms need to have an increased marked severity or only be present in the luteal window. So that's the week or two before your period. Another defining feature is that the symptoms will pretty much dissipate and be absent during the follicular phase, which is the part of the menstrual cycle from when you have your period to when you ovulate again. Therefore, this means that in order to make an accurate diagnosis, individuals need to prospectively track their menstrual cycle against their emotional and physical symptoms and only after a minimum of two months will a clinician be able to make a diagnosis. Once a diagnosis of PMDD has been made, there are a number of treatment options available to them. When I was age 11, I began struggling with my mental health. Um, I started to develop um, anxiety and low mood, and um, over the years this progressed, and eventually I ended up under a community mental health team, and I was diagnosed with depression, anxiety, um, deliberate self-harm and an eating disorder. And despite wanting to get better and trying many different talking therapies and medications, my life often felt like it was spiralling out of control. However, in 2016, at age 26, I was diagnosed with a condition called premenstrual dysphoric disorder. Up until this point, I, like many, had never heard of this condition. Understandably, I was sceptical. However, finally having the correct diagnosis meant that I could access the right treatment and this honestly changed my life. I went from being an individual who wasn't able to work and was barely able to look after myself, regularly self-harming, engaging in eating disordered behaviours and taking overdoses as a maladaptive way of coping with my anxiety and feelings of being out of control to a capable and optimistic individual who was now thriving. For the first time in 17 years, I was finally happy. Menstrual health education and awareness is important to me because I believe that it saved my life. I think it's really important that we continue to encourage conversations about menstrual health. During my own education, I was given very basic scientific information about the menstrual cycle. I was told to expect a period, but nobody told me about the factors that went alongside the period. Nobody talked about the emotional side and nobody talked about what was normal. Feeling too ashamed and embarrassed to talk to my friends about it, I assumed that what I was going through was normal. Although much of the time I couldn't understand why I seemed to be struggling so much when everybody else seemed to be getting on okay with their lives. Because we didn't talk about it, I didn't know that they were not going through similar. Because my own menstrual health education was very limited, Nobody taught me to be aware of my menstrual cycle and the fact that there could be 
both physical and psychological symptoms that had I had this advice and been aware of the potential symptoms at an earlier age, maybe I could have started my menstrual tracking and got an accurate diagnosis sooner. I think for me growing up, I felt a lot of shame and stigma about talking about my menstrual health. Um, I, I, like many people, saw um, periods as something like dirty because of the intimate area that they came from and um, I was embarrassed to talk about them. And although it is improving, mental health is also something that many people are embarrassed to talk about. So when you put the two together, the menstrual health and the mental health, it's no wonder that people don't talk about it. However, how can individuals know that what they're going through is not normal if they don't talk about it? We only know our own normal. And if these symptoms have been occurring since the onset of puberty, how are individuals to know that there are treatment options which may enable them to live a better quality and more fulfilled life. Sadly, recent research has shown that PMDD has a 30% suicide attempt rate. However, it is thought that up to 90% of individuals with PMDD continue to suffer undiagnosed. I honestly believe with the right menstrual health education, we can raise awareness of these debilitating illnesses and with increased awareness, earlier diagnosis will be made and the correct diagnosis will hopefully mean the individual receives the correct treatment, which will not only change lives, it will save lives. Thank you. So periods matter to me because it's a way of my body showing me that it's functioning well and that it's healthy. Um, <clears throat> periods matter to me because uh, I see it as a collective experience, something that menstruators from all of humanity since the time of Adam and Eve, or whatever creation story you believe, have experienced. Uh, periods matter to me because uh, not only is it a collective experience, but it's also an individual one where not all periods are the same for everyone. We all go through the experience uh, uh, in an individual way, and it can differ from a person to another, and it makes it unique to you. Um, periods matter to me because we, all of us, we literally would not be here without it. Hello, my name is Susan Alobo from IRISE Uganda. i um, talking about why menstruation matters. Um, menstruation is a fundamental concern for everyone, uh, not only the girls and women who menstruate, but should be a concern for everyone in the society. But because of the social norms that we have in our communities, in our societies, you, in our families, you find that um, girls grow up knowing that menstruation is not normal. You find that in some of our religious, girls are not al allowed to attend uh, prayers, girls are not allowed to cook at home, girls are not even allowed to go to school because they are menstruating. Uh, so for that reason, Iris came in to teach, to educate, and also empower the young children in schools, the teachers in the schools, the parents in the community, um, the religious leaders in our community. And then all this, we are working together uh, with the trained community champions to make sure that everyone is informed. And on top of that, you realize that girls express the need for the menstrual hygiene products during school, during menstruation at school, you find that entirely this is supposed to be the role of the parents to support their children during menstruation. But because the girls are not getting this support, uh, therefore IRIS comes in to provide menstrual hygiene products for the girls such that they are able to stay at school. And from that time we, IRIS started doing this, girls are now attending school they are no longer dropping out of school, they have full attendance, and also they are now performing even much better than the boys. Thank you. My name is Sarah. I work with IRIS Uganda as a community educator. I'm here to discuss the, the reason as to why periods matter. Periods matter because they are a sign to show a girl that she's normal. What do I mean? If a girl clocks, for example, 18 to 19 years and she has not seen her periods, it worries her, it raises a lot of questions in her mind. She, kept, she keeps on asking herself, why don't I menstruate? Am I sick? Am I abnormal? 
what's not happening with me so when a girl menstruates it gives it builds that confidence in her and it keeps her comfortable to know that she's normal periods matter because when not spoken about in community and society it leads to school dropouts among girls how for example if a girl stained the house dress with menstrual blood in class and the class laughed at her that girl may decide never to go back to school because she's ashamed she doesn't want to face the people who laughed at her when they saw blood behind her dress and eventually she will drop out of school hence ruining her future because it wasn't spoken about menstruation is important to speak about because it it comes with a lot of myth in communities in different communities there are very many myths for example a girl should not cook food at home when she's in her periods this makes a girl uncomfortable and she feel she it may make her feel isolated in a home because she's menstruating menstruation is important or periods i matter because when not spoken about in society may lead to early marriages hello i'm salma sad young i work with iris institute east africa i'm here to say something as to why menstruation matters it matters because it is something that involves each and every one the girls the boys the women and the men but because of the social norms that we have got in our societies menstruation is looked at as something that is dirty a curse something that is abnormal and that is all because people outside there do not have the right information and that is why us as iris uganda have come up to there to sensitize the young girls in school the teachers the community members and the religious leaders we have also gone ahead to train community champions who have worked hand in hand with us and have gone out there to help and educate the people out there about menstruation since we deal with girls in school we have also seen that there is need for proper sanitary pads to be used and this has been a concern from the girls yet this is something that is supposed to be given to them by their own parents but we as iris uganda we have gone ahead to provide reusable sanitary pads to the school children and this has made them to be full time in school not like before where there was a lot of school dropouts and most of the girls could not even come to school because they lacked what to use but since we have provided them with the reusable sanitary pads it has improved their performances and even there are no more school dropouts there are no more early marriages that is why i come out here to say that menstruation matters to each and every one let's give people the knowledge and everything shall be well thank you hi i'm bettina beltawa i'm professor of modern languages at the university of st andrews and i research menstruation in particular in the middle ages in literature culture thought medicine um i'm really interested in menstruation and periods matter to me because i think they reveal so much about assumptions about men women gender bodies um women in the middle ages essentially were assigned less perfect bodies than men they couldn't contain their fluids they had this uncontrollable flow that was associated with yuckiness with being disgusting with even being poisonous and i think so much of this has persisted into our enlightened um rational scientific way of thinking in modernity and even to this present day so i think by thinking about menstruation and trying to revalue it and take it seriously we can fundamentally change our assumptions about gender and about the inferiority of women